Good morning, Grace Church. How are you doing today? God is definitely worthy to be praised. Come on, we need everybody to get online. Let's go and let everybody know that worship has began. Come on, let somebody know that grace is live and we are about to enter into worship. I'm ready for worship and I pray and you're ready for worship so that we might be able to see what God has for us today. Do me a favor, if you don't mind, so we can get this message out to everybody in the world. Please share this right now, right where you are. Come on, share it. If you don't know where it is, just look down right there on your left-hand side. You'll see a button that says share. Come on, click that, share that, share that to your personal page. And when you share that to your personal page, other people who might follow you or might be friends with you will be able to see it. Come on, like it, give us some hearts and all those wonderful things and let people know that we are live and we are ready for worship. Come on, have you been through enough this week that you just got to sit here and give God everything you have? Come on, I know you might not be in the church house. You might be on your couch, you might be at your dining room table, might be in your bed. It doesn't make a difference. Lift your hands right now and give God praise, Lord, and just say thank you for one more day to worship you. Come on, lift your hands and say thank you for one more day to enter into worship, although it's virtually. Thank you, God, for having breath in my body one more day. Thank you, Lord, that I have a house. I have internet service. God, thank you so much for just being so good. Come on to me, to me. Listen, we, we, we thank everybody for jumping on early this morning. And this is what I need for you to do. I need for you to just, again, share this with somebody, like it, let somebody know that we are in worship. Can I pray with you this morning before we uh, turn it over to our worship team? Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, because you are omniscient, you're worthy, you're, you're almighty, God, you're our everything. And God, with you being our everything, God, we just want to worship and praise you with every fiber of our being. So God, I pray in the name of Jesus that as we enter into worship this morning, God, that you will go before us, you will be with us. Lord, we invoke your holy presence in this place like it has never rested in this place before. God, we want a double pouring of your anointing right now, God. Lord, so I pray, God, Lord, that somebody will be healed, set free, saved, and delivered. Somebody will be converted, convicted, and changed. Somebody, Father God, will get to know you as their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, but we can't do anything until your Shekinah glory rests and pours down upon us. So we pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you would provoke your presence even the more, God. Lord, God, we feel shackles being broken on people. God, we feel spirits being lifted in the name of Jesus. God, we see minds being renewed in the name of Jesus. God, we see vision being poured into people just off of the worship experience, God. Accept this, I worship unto you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen again, come on, share this. Let somebody know that grace is on for worship. We're about to get into worship. Are you ready to worship? Come on, are you ready to worship? Come on, just let somebody know I'm ready to worship. Amen. Come on, praise and worship team. Lead us. Hallelujah. You've already set your personal atmosphere. And the scripture says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So you are now free to worship, free to lift your hands, free to give him glory. simple song it just says I'm free to dance and sing free to lift my hands and worship Lord I'm free Lord I'm free I'm free to dance and sing free to lift my hands and worship Lord I'm free Lord I'm free say I'm free to dance free to dance and sing free to lift my hands and worship Lord Lord, I'm free. Yeah. Lord, I'm free. Say I'm free to dance. Free to lift my hands. Free to lift my hands and worship. Yeah, yeah. Lord, I'm free. Say I'm free to dance. Free to lift my hands and worship. Yeah, Lord. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. to lift my hands. Free to lift my hands. Worship, Lord, I'm Say, Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Say, I'm a free worshiper. 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 Say, Lord, I'm free. Lord, Say, I'm a free worshiper. 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 Say, Lord, I'm free. Say, I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. 
worshiper. Yes, I am. I'm a free worshiper. Yeah. I'm a free worshiper. Say, Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Say, I'm free to dance. Free to lift my hands. Free to lift my hands and worship, Lord. Say, Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. I'm free to dance. Free to lift my hands. Free to lift my hands and worship, Lord. Say, Lord. Say I'm free to dance now. Free to lift my hands and worship, Lord. Say, Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. I'm free to dance. Free to dance. Free to lift my hands and worship, Lord. Say, Lord, I'm free. Say I'm a free worshiper. 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 Say, Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Whom the sun sets free is free. Whom the sun sets free is free. Say, Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. 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 I'm free and I'll never be bound again. I thank God I'm free and I'll never be bound again. Come on, you declare it. I thank God I'm free. I thank God I'm free. Chains holding me, and I'll never, and I'll never be bound again. Say, I thank God I'm free. Yeah. I thank God I'm free, and I'll never, and I'll never, I'll never be, be bound. bound Say, I'm a free worshiper. 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 Say, Lord, I'm free. Lord. I'm I'm a free worshiper. 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 Yeah. Say, Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Yeah. I'm a free worshiper. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm a free worshiper. 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 Say, Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm Say, free. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm and I'm free. glad about it. Lord, I'm free. Yes, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. No more shackles. Lord, I'm free. No more chains. Lord, I'm free. My past is behind me. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. And I'm forgiven. Lord, I'm free. Say, Lord, I'm free. 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 Yeah. Lord, I'm free. 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 Yeah. Lord, I'm free. Say, Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Lord, I'm I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Hallelujah. No more shackles. No more chains. No more bondage. We are free. Hallelujah.
you, Father. You are so good, and your mercy endure forever. You are so merciful. You are so kind. No one compares to you. You are the only true and living God. And Father, we thank you. We magnify you. We adore you. We lift you up. We exalt you. There's no name higher, no name bigger, no name greater. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good to me. So many times, 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 so many times,
that you heal me. You've been better than good to 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 me. Come on, if the Lord's been good to you. Come on, if you know God's been good to you, I dare you just to testify right now on this live. Come on, just begin to tell people how good God's been. Come on, come on, if you know God has been good to you. Come, listen, just come on, if you know God has been good to you, if you know that God has done marvelous and wonderful and mighty things to you, come on, I, I dare you just to tell somebody right now, Come on, I dare you to tell somebody right now. Come on, let her know, say, God's been good to me. Come on, say, God's been good to me. They used to say it like this, if I had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough for me to tell you just how good my God's been. Woo! Come on, tell them, say, God's been good. <laughs> listen, listen, if I had a church full right now, I believe mother would be in the back standing up, rocking from side to side because God's been too good to her. I feel like somebody will get some dancing in their feet because God's been so good to them. Listen, I know can't nobody see you, but I dare you just to stand right now, walk around your room and let somebody know God's been good to me. 
come on come on listen listen i i i know we're not in the church but come on can you just make your carpet a dance floor right now and say god's been good to me come on i dare somebody god's been good to see you out there. I, I, I know you want to get up and dance around your room. I, you, come on, you can dance right now. Come on, God's been good to me. Come on, I'll dare you to dance right where you are. Come on. God's been good to me. He's just been that good to me. And I know he's been good to you. Listen, I, I, I don't know what you've been through this week, but today is a good day to cast it to the side and just let somebody know God has been so good, so good and so wonderful to me. I believe there's a word for the church this morning, and I don't want to tarry with you long, so I want you to get your Bibles ready. Exodus 18th chapter. If you can, I know we've been in the book of Exodus for some time now, and um, God has been leaving me here and leaving us here for a little while and there's nothing wrong with that amen and so we want to thank God that God is a healer sister Bowie I see your own here amen we want to thank God for you listen I, I just want to shout out some of the greatest workers we have in all of Zion and all of the kingdom um, and I have to make sure that I give honor what honor is due and give praise to those who uh, work hard and diligently in the church and as you know uh, from some of the pictures that you have seen, that our um, our chairs, I have finally arrived. Amen, somebody. They have finally arrived. And I know some people were saying, Pastor, you said they were going to be here a long time ago. Well, I know God has all power, but I don't have power to move freights and, and trucks and all those other things. Amen. And so we thank God that they're here. Um, and uh, we've, we've, we've got the floor. I wish I could show you now, but there's a video on, I think, the Facebook link that you can look at. We did a sneak peek of what's going on. God is doing some great things. Even in the pandemic, we've been productive. Some of, somebody ought to give God praise for that. Amen. That even in the pandemic, we've been able to be productive. And we've been able to further the footprint of ministry. Not because we have chairs. No, that's not the footprint of ministry. That's, that's, that's basically because you can stand up and worship. Amen. But because we have pursued excellence when people said that you ought to just stack your stuff and leave things alone. No, we pursued excellence. Amen. As a church body. And so I want to thank God for these trustees who have definitely worked hard and moved so diligently to make things happen. Uh, for those who helped us unload the truck, we had an 18-wheeler out here, and uh, Brother Roy was out there moving them things like he was spry. That's what they say in the country, spry. You know, he was, he was out there just moving them things. Now, he had to go in the house and sit down after a while. <laughs> I'm messing with you, Brother Roy, but and Brother James, and we had Brother Darnell out here as well, and, and we had Brother Clyde that came and helped us. And um, Saturday morning, we had trustees out here brother James Moore and, and uh, we had also we had brother Graham out here and also brother Mike Joe came and helped us and we just had a wonderful time out here and I thank God for our chairwoman of our trustee board which is leading uh, this board in an excellent way uh, Dr. Orlise Clayton Hodges I said her whole government day and uh, she's doing a wonderful job along with um, our secretary of the church Ms. Chandra Grant that orchestrated this and made sure that they were on top of it to get it done Listen, I just believe this right here. When you try to do something on your own, that's when things fall. But when you have a group of people that can help you out, there's a thing, there's many things can happen. So we want to make sure that we just give honor and praise that is due to them just for working diligently hard inside of our church. Come on, can you just give them some thumbs up for that right now? Come on, just say thank you, trustees, for working so diligently and so hard. Let's get to the word of the Lord. Exodus, the 18th chapter beginning at verse 1, and it is not my plan to be with you long. Here it is. Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all what God had done for Moses and, the Israel, and Israel, his people. How the Lord had bought Israel out of Egypt. Now Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, had taken Zephora, Moses' wife, after he had sent her home, along with his two sons. The name of one which was Gershon, because he said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land. And the other one was Elzer. For he said, the God of my father may help and deliver me from the sword of Pharaoh. 
Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with the sons and his wife, Moses, in the wilderness where he was encamped at the mountain of God. That's Mount Sinai. And when he sent word to Moses, I, your father-in-law, Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons with her. Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare and went into his tent. Verse 8, Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done for Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the hardship that had come upon them in the way, and how the Lord had delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the good that the Lord had done to Israel, and that, he said, delivered them out of the hand of Egypt. Uh, of the Egyptians. Verse 10, Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who has delivered you out of the hands of the Egyptians and out of the hands of Pharaoh and has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Verse 11, Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods because he in this affair, they've dealt uh, aggressively with the people. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, bought a burnt offering and sacrificed it to to God. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses, father-in-law, before God. Ooh, I know that was a lot to read. Listen, I want to talk to you this morning from a simple thought, uh, from trial to triumph. I want to talk to you from the thought of from trial to triumph. Let us bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you now that we have an opportunity to be with you. God, we thank you, Lord, because we didn't have to be here today, but we are. And so, God, since we are, we pray that your hand will be with us. And God, that you will guide us through this word. God, I meant to you, I'm not worthy to preach your word, but I stand here available. Now, God, if there's anything hindering your word from going forth, God, would you cast it back into the pits of hell from whence it belongs? God, if there's anything, God, Lord, that's in us that will prohibit us from receiving a word from you, I pray, Father God, Lord, that you would move it to the side, cast it out, God, so that we might be able to get exactly what we need so that we can be better for the kingdom of God, better serve you. So, God, now you are our strength. You are our redeemer. Send the devil on flight right now so that somebody might make a conscious decision to worship and praise you even the more. Now, God, if you speak, we'll listen. Your servant is hearing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. From trial to triumph. Uh, We've been journeying with the Israelites now since Pharaoh's uh, reluctancy to let them go. We have collectively and somehow in in some harmonious effort through Bible study and through Sunday morning service uh, and sermons to try to put some correlation between what God is doing on their behalf and what God is doing in them. See, it's wonderful for us to sit back and celebrate what God is doing on our behalf. Sometimes it's difficult for us to sit back and really locate what God is doing within us. Here's the reason why. Because a lot of times when God is doing something in us, it is causing us to leave a mindset that we've been comfortable with for a long time. See, it's easy for me to go and do the things that I've been doing for so long simply just because it takes no effort. Uh If you tell somebody who was struggling with uh, substance abuse, uh, it's easy for them to remain addicted, but it's hard for them to try to change the new life. Why? Simply just because there are things that have strongholds on you. Yes, it is a sickness. Yes, it is a disease. And whenever you try to change behavior, listen, it comes with a struggle, not necessarily in uh, the substance itself, but in my behavior to be attached to the substance. Y'all follow what I'm saying to you? So in essence, we have in this text God working on their behalf. But if you're really looking at this text in its sincerity, it's God working within them. I'll prove it to you when we get to the scripture. We've sit back and we have journeyed with them at the Red Sea. We've sit there and we've saw God give them water, not once but twice. 
We've seen God rain down manna from heaven that it would cover the ground, that they had no lack. Even God gave them a double portion on the sixth day, so on the Sabbath day they could be one with God without any work, without any sweat upon their brow. Then we see that God also delivers them from a fight. God said that the Amaleks were coming up against them, and God blotted them out of the earth. Isn't it amazing that God is working around them, that God is working on their behalf? But now we find ourselves journeying to chapter 18. And in chapter 18, what is so special about this chapter is you really don't see any trouble in this text. You really begin to see growth. Here it is. Let me talk to you. So uh, uh, if you really begin to dissect right there at, at verse 1 in chapter 18, it begins to paint the story that Moses is chilling on the mountain of God, which is Mount Sinai. All the people have been there. They've already been in a fight and they already won. They've already been without food. God provided. They've already been without water. Not once, but twice. God provided, and now they're at the mountain of God, Mount Sinai, and here it does not report of any enemies coming against them. It does not report of any lack of water, food, or substance. What it simply says is now Moses is about to have an encounter with his father-in-law, Jethro. Jethro is somewhat uh, a little difficult to understand because if you go through contextual accuracy of who Jethro is, there are many different names that he is given and many different capacities, but for the sake of this text, Jethro is a chief priest of the Midian, the Midianites, if you will. And you've got to understand about the Midianites, they are of the lineage of Abraham, but not to Isaac, but it would be to Abraham and his son Ishmael. So therefore, they are not necessarily followers of God. They're followers of other gods. And all, but he is Moses' father-in-law. But listen, listen, but it doesn't just stop there. He's not coming by himself. He's coming with uh, uh, Moses' wife, uh, Sephora, but he's also coming with his two sons. One that he named because uh, he was a sojourner in a foreign land. Maybe you don't know the background of Moses, but Moses is somebody who was raised in the palace. He is a prince, but he's also a Hebrew. But now when he finally learns his lineage, he goes off. And about age 40, he begins to take upon what God would call him to do. And he now is, uh, he finds uh, Jethro's daughter on the side of a mountain. And on the side of this mountain, uh, he is then introduced to Jethro. Jethro then gives him his daughter. But if you look at the text carefully, it says that Moses sent her back home. This is just a quick lesson for you. Sent her back home would then suggest that somewhere along the way, as he was doing God's business, he says, I don't have time to deal with this. You need to go back home to your father. Which simply, in some Hebrew texts, would suggest that he divorced her because then it says that the father welcomed her back home with her two sons. Y'all read that in the text. I just want to make sure that we're contextually accurate here. Uh, but, but if you journey on a little bit further, it says that once he got word that his father-in-law was coming, he came and he sat there with him and he talked with him for a little while. But Jethro came, not because Jethro was a follower of the Almighty God. Jethro didn't come just because he... Uh, knew everything that was going on. Jethro came because he heard about what God was doing for Moses and the people that he was leading. Can I stop right here parenthetically and tell somebody something? A lot of times folk won't come see you until they figure out that God is doing something for you. You ever known people like that? That they don't come check on you, they don't call you, they don't text you, but as soon as they find out that you got a new job, you got a new boo, you got a new car, you you got a new house now everybody want to be in your business <laughs> here it is so Jethro comes down and he says listen I heard what God's been doing for you and right here in the text it says that once he embraced him he brought him into his tent and inside of his tent this is where the text really goods good to me because then Moses begins to sit back and he begins to recount and recall everything that they've been through. Here he is. You, you've got to go back and look at it. They've been through 10 plagues. They've been, uh, they've been chased by uh, the Egyptians to bring them back to captivity. They've been at the becking of a Red Sea that wouldn't move. 
They've been without water, not once but twice. They've been without food, and they've been without quail and bread, but God provided for them. They've been in a fight that they didn't think they could win, but when he lifted up his hands, they begin to, uh, they begin to beat the Amaleks. Listen, Moses has a lot to tell him about the trials that they faced. Moses said, I thought we were about to die, but God somehow made a way. We thought that we were hungry and the people have been complaining to me, but God made a way. I hope you catch it after a while. He says that we had no water to drink, but God made a way. He even let me hit a rock with a staff in my hand and water came out. He is pouring his heart out to Jethro, letting him know about all the trials he's been through. And can I stop for a moment and ask some people some questions because we do a good job at knowing everything that's been done wrong to us. See, we know when everybody hurt us we can recall what you said we can go back and know how you said it how you rolled your neck and bat at your eyes listen we can go back and know what happened to us from a child all the way to where we are now don't we do a good job of letting everybody know about our trials about our struggles and about our situations don't we do a good job in letting folk know that I've been through some trouble that I ain't always been saved as I am today that I ain't always had a Bible in my hand I ain't always been a preacher ain't always played uh, an instrument I ain't always been on the trustee board I ain't always been a praise and worship leader listen I got some trials I can tell you about I got any witnesses out there that can say pastor I've been through some hell in my life I've been through some turbulent times in my life but this is my issue with you knowing all your trials listen is nothing wrong with telling people your trials my question is can you tell people your triumphs Okay, well, maybe you don't know what, 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 what a triumph is. See, a triumph is not only can I tell you about my trial, not only can I tell you about my struggle, not only can I tell you about my tears and how depressed I was, but what I also can tell you is God, through every trial, through every situation, through every tear that's been shed, through every depressional thought that was in my head, somehow God showed up and relieved me from the pressure. I was feeling, listen, and inside this tent right here, he turns this conversation not into a necessarily a counseling session. He turns it into a testimony service, okay? Maybe y'all don't know what testimony services are. Let me sit back and give you a little bit of my cogent background. See, I remember testimony service was a wonderful time. Because during testimony service, people would tell about all the trials they've been through on this week. Some mother stand up and say about how she's on a fixed income and didn't know how she was going to pay a light bill. Somebody will stand up and say that I've had some health challenges, but I'm still here. What they did not alleviate from the conversation is how God stepped in when they felt like they were stepped on. Listen, and I wish I had about 50 of y'all out there that can say I just can't stay stuck in my trials. I've got to sit back and tell somebody about my triumphs. Why? Because my triumphs triumphs don't speak about how good I am, but my triumphs speak about how good God is. I got any witnesses out there that can say, yes, I can recall all of my trials, but at the end of every trial, God was right there. I can recall every tear that fell from my eye, but at the end of the tear, I found God. I can sit back and tell you about every thought that wasn't of God that was in my head, but when God relieved me and took the foot pressure of the enemy off of me. God was right there. Is there any believers out there that can say, I thank God that not only have I had trials, but at the end of every trial, I was triumphant, which simply means it don't mean I didn't have tears. It just means that the tears won't stay there. It didn't mean that I haven't been trampled on. What it simply means is that it didn't kill me. It doesn't mean that I won't have bad times. What it simply means is God God is better than any bad time I've ever had before. Are there any witnesses out there that can say, I'm not going to stay stuck in my trial. I'm going to learn how to celebrate my triumphs all at the same time. He's in this tent. Turns this tent to a testimony service. And when he's there, he says, yeah, I want to check on your welfare. But he says, listen here. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, the Lord has delivered them. That's what the word says. It says the Lord has delivered them. And I, I wonder if there's about 10 of y'all out there that can say, yeah, 
Uh -huh, I, I've been knocked down, but the Lord delivered me. Yeah, I've had some Red Sea experiences, but the Lord has delivered me. Yes, I've been without sometimes. Didn't know where it was going to come from, but the Lord delivered me. Yeah, I had to struggle every now and then and didn't know how the struggling was going to be released. But the, it's right there in the text. It says he delivered them all. And I just came by to tell somebody, don't you celebrate your, your trials. You've got to learn how to celebrate your triumphs because it's nothing but the hand of God that keeps delivering you day after day struggle after struggle trial after trial heartache after heartache down after down God has a way of being the one that delivers them from them all that's what the text says but listen here's the second thing that I want to tell you not, not only do you have to learn how to find your triumph but here it is and in that tent, not only did he turn it into a testimony service, but it says Jethro began to rejoice. Okay, uh, why is this so important? Again, I told you Jethro is the priest of the Midianites. Um, if you do some contextual or, or, or if you do some historical background on it, they become from the lineage of Ishmael, which simply means that um, uh, they believe in God, but they have some paganistic practices and ways as well. Uh, you begin to, to see it down in later on in the text. Uh, but right here in verse 9, it says, not that Moses rejoiced. It says that Jethro rejoiced. Can I just tell somebody something? Listen, if you want to really start celebrating uh, from being in trials to triumph, you got to start talking with people that will rejoice on your behalf. Listen, it didn't say that Moses began to cut a rug. It didn't say that Moses lifted his hand, but it says that Jethro began to rejoice. And this is why Jethro rejoiced. He says, for all the good that the Lord had done for Israel. And can I tell somebody something that sometimes you've got to get with people that will celebrate what God has done for you in your life. Listen, listen, when folks sit back and try to talk you out of a blessing, that ain't who you need to be hanging around with. He brought Jethro in his tent and when he started telling him his testimony, something jumped in Jethro and Jethro began to rejoice. How many friends do you have in your circle that will praise God not for what God has done for them but will praise God for what he's done for you. See, I need some people that got my back that don't mind not only going to battle with me in the spirit, but I need some folk that can sit back and rejoice with me over what God is doing for me in my life. And Jethro said, I've got to rejoice, Moses, because God has done wonderful things in your life. How unselfish is Jethro at this time? Because Jethro took back his daughter. Jethro is now raising his two sons, but he comes comes to his tent and says, listen, I'm going to celebrate with you. Why? Because God is doing some mighty things in your life. And listen, let me just stop for a moment. And I just need to tell some people out there, can I celebrate God with you? Because God is doing some mighty things on your behalf. Listen, can I just stop for a moment? And I don't want to thank God for anything he's done for me. I just want to thank God for what he's doing for you. Look at you and your blessed self. I want to celebrate that God has kept you during the pandemic. Come on. Can I celebrate? Celebrate with somebody that God has lifted you up from uh, the bottom of what you thought was the end. And God has given you a smile again. Come on. Can I celebrate with somebody that he's brought your child back home and took them off drugs and picked them back up and made them. Can I celebrate with somebody right quick that God has simply kept your light on when you thought your lights were. Can I celebrate with somebody right quick that God has healed your, your parents and God. Can, can I celebrate? with somebody that God gave you a job? Can I celebrate with somebody that God keeps keeping you when everything wants to? I wish I had somebody in here that wouldn't mind helping me preach and just say, I'm going to rejoice for my neighbor. It ain't all about me. Jethro begins to rejoice because God is doing some mighty and wonderful things for Moses. So, 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 so when I go for trials, to triumph. Not only do I have testimony, but I got to get with some people that don't mind rejoicing with me. Listen, listen. Jeffro continues on with his rejoicing. He says, Blessed uh, be the Lord who delivered you out of the hand of Egypt and out of the hands of Pharaoh and delivered the people from the hands of the Egyptians. Ah, but when you begin, li listen to me, li listen to me, but when you begin to tell people about your trials, but then how you triumph, 
not only will they rejoice on your behalf, ah, but this is what I love about the text. It's right here. It says, but then Jethro said, now I know, <laughs> listen to me, that the Lord is greater than all gods <laughs> ah, because he has dealt ah, arrogantly with the people that tried to deal arrogantly with you. Okay. Uh, why is this so significant? Because remember, I told you he's a priest of the Midianites. Uh, he comes from the seed of Abraham, but he is of the, uh, of the lineage of Ishmael. Ishmael was the one that was kicked out, cast aside, because uh, God's uh, 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 promise was not placed upon him. Uh, you, you know, he's the one that, you know, uh, Sarah dealt uh, very harshly with his mother. Uh, you, you know who Ishmael is. Ishmael is the one that he says, listen, uh, God says that my hand is not with him, but here I have 12 princes, that the Midianites are from that lineage. And so, therefore, when uh, Moses starts telling Jethro, the one who doesn't necessarily subscribe uh, to the God that we subscribe to everything that God did, this is what the chief priest of the Midianites, paganistic people said. He says, wait a minute. If God has done all this for you, he says, I thought I knew about God. He says, but now that I hear you talking, now I know God is the God above all God. Listen, I need to tell somebody something. The reason why you need to keep telling people about your trials and how God has made you triumphant is because you will turn non-believers into believers. Come on, I got any witnesses out there that can say, listen, I can't keep my mouth shut about how God has made me triumphant because there's somebody out there who doesn't believe. But if I can stand firm on on the word of God and let them know what God has done for me maybe just maybe I can send the person who doesn't know about God I can send them to the throne of God and so I came by to tell somebody many people are going to be delivered just by you opening your mouth listen I know we're in a pandemic but God still says you can open your mouth and tell people about how I know that you got a mask over your face but a mask over your face don't stop you from telling people how good God's been to you and when you begin to tell people how good God's been to you I believe you will have a Jethro conversion now I know that God is a healer now I know that God is a deliverer now I know that God will sustain your mind now I know that God is a I wish I had somebody that would help me preach now I know that God is a sustainer now I know God is a provider now I know God will give you water in a desert Land. Now I know God a part of Red Sea. Now I know God will change a leader's mind. Now I know God will swallow up your enemies. And I came by to tell somebody that you ought to know by now that God would do exactly what God said he would do. Open your mouth and tell somebody I've had some trials, but I've also been triumphant. That's what the word says, what the word says. But listen, the last thing, I'm going to let you go, I'm going to let you go. Um, he says something a little particular right here in, 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 in the text. Um, um, begins to go down right here. And then in verse 12 it says, And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, bought a burnt offering and a sacrifice to God. And Aaron came with him, and the elders of Israel, and Moses' father-in-law before God. Well, Pastor, why is this so important to the text? So we went from welcoming Jethro to witnessing with Jethro. <laughs> and now we're about to worship God. Let me, let me bring that back again. We went from welcoming Jethro to witnessing to Jethro. And now it has moved to worshiping God. I'll say it one more time. Education tells you if you say it three times, they'll get it. Here we go. They went from welcoming Jethro. You know when he says, I'm coming in. And he uh, fell down and kissed him uh, and said, hey, hey, how you doing? Glad you're here. Then we went from witnessing to Jethro. Remember when he went into the tent, they began to tell him about all the good things that God has done for him. And then now, somewhere around after rejoicing, <laughs> after they rejoiced a little while, then somewhere in the middle, it turned into worship. Okay, here it is. So in the biblical days, you got to understand something that when you begin to make an offering to God, that was your worship. 
When you begin to sacrifice a God that was your worship. And it doesn't say, listen, that Moses began to do the offering and the sacrifice. It says that Jethro began to worship God for what he's done for Moses. Listen, listen to me. You've got to get to the point, and this is how you know that you move from trials to triumph. Not only will you welcome people, not only will you be a witness, but in the midst of everything else, you will learn how to be a worshiper. Here it is because they have gone from telling them about his trials telling them about his triumphs and right here at verse 12 now they are beginning to worship God through sacrifice here it is I got to get up out of here you want to know how you're really triumphant is because you'll begin to worship God not off of what he's doing now <laughs> nowhere in the text does it talk about what God is doing now it doesn't talk about how God is moving mountains now. Listen, it's not talking about how God is healing their body. Now, it's not talking about how God is parting Red Seas now. What it is saying is what God did before we got to this conversation. You want to know how you're really walking in your victory, how you're really walking triumphantly, how you know the past is not dictating your present. It won't interfere with your destiny and your future because you're able to worship of God not off of what God is doing now <laughs> but I'm able to worship God off of what he did last week and what God did last year matter of fact what God did last decade and Jethro says listen we about to worship God just for you not off of what he's going to do tomorrow but I got to stop and worship God because of what he did for you back in Egypt and I came by to tell somebody in here you've had some Egypt experiences too you've had some things holding you down preach down Davis, you had some things trying to pursue and kill your destiny. You've had some things that tried to take you out of here. You've had some things that tried to destroy your mind. You had some things that tried to destroy your marriage. You've had some things that tried to destroy your family. You've had some things that tried to put you in the grave. You've had some things that tried to destroy your grandchildren. But look at you. Look at you now. You've been triumphant. And after every trial you've been through, you ought to just lift your hands and begin to worship God. Not off of what you're doing today, but I got to worship you because I could have lost my mind a long time ago. God, this worship is not for today, but this worship is what you did yesterday. This worship is what you did last week. This worship is what you did last year. This worship is what you did 10 years ago. Do I got anybody out there that can say, God, I'm worshiping you for my triumphs. I know I've had some trials. I know I had some situations. I know I've had some burdens to carry. I know I have some trouble to trip me. I know I've had some bruises to break me. But I got a worship in me that says, God, you've been good more good to me than I've been to myself and for that reason alone I'm going to lift my hands lift my voice put shouting in my feet I'm going to give to you God why because you've been good you've been good You've been so good to me. I wish I had about 50 of y'all that can say I'm triumphant and I'm worshiping God off of all my victories. After all my victories. God, this worship is for my victory. This worship is for my victory. This worship is for my triumph. This worship is because I didn't lose my mind. I didn't lose my marriage. I didn't lose my children. I didn't lose my job. I didn't lose my house. I didn't lose my income. Worship God. Oh, for what God has already done for you. Yeah. God, I worship you. Listen, listen, I, I, I got to get out of here. But, but he begins to worship God. Not off of what God is doing now. <laughs> he worships God because of what God did for him before. And I just believe he said, you've been so good to me. And for that reason alone, 
got to worship God. Come on, listen, I don't know who you are out there. But God's been so good. He's been real good to you. Matter of fact, he's been better than good. And in this verse, it's simply said, I can't praise you enough. I owe you everything. God, I can't praise you enough, even if I try. So the simple ending to it is, God, you've been <laughs> so good to me. Listen, can I pray with you, Father? We thank you. We thank you, God, because somebody knows their trials. God, but they don't stop there. They also know their trials. God, my prayer today is for somebody who's stuck in the middle of, tri of trials and triumph. That God, they're in the middle of a trial, Lord, but they can't see it being triumphant right now. God, I pray that you will keep them, Lord, that they won't lose faith. That you'll keep them, God, that they won't get weary. God, Lord, that you will hold them, Father God, and they won't slip out of your hand. But God, Lord, I pray for those who have triumphant testimonies. Can be a witness, God, Lord, that are turning to a worship. That he is the only true and living God. That he is the one that will deliver you from it all. That God is the one that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above where we can ask, I think, that he is the one. He is the one. Make us bold enough, strong enough, Father God, to not only welcome and be a witness, God, but be a worship about our trials that move to triumph. Now, God, I pray that you would hold somebody, God, Lord, that needs you in the middle of the two. That you'll keep somebody, Father God, that wants to quit and throw in the towel. God, I love you. God, we love you. God, allow us to be somebody, Lord, who can rejoice, not off of what you've just done for us, Lord, but what you're doing for others. God, we thank you and we love you. In the name of Jesus, we pray that all God's people say amen. Listen, there might be somebody out there today that says, you know what, I'm not saved. And I need to give God my life. Listen, just repeat after me. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I recognize that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for me. And he rose again on the third day. So I'm confessing with my mouth. And I'm believing in my heart. And the word of God says, I'm saved. Listen, if you said that simple prayer today, I want to let you know that you are saved by the grace of God. And don't let anybody tell you just because somebody didn't lay their hands on you and somebody didn't put oil on you. You ain't start shaking in convulsion that you're not saved. No, you are saved today. And so listen, this is what I want you to do. Connect with us if you would. You can leave a message right here on Facebook for us. Or you can go to our website, gracechurchraleigh.org. Click on the connect button, fill out the information for us. And so we can just get back with you, talk with you, call you, and celebrate with you. Listen, and rejoice with you that you're moving from trials to being triumphant. Come on, if you've been blessed today by the word, that you can say that, God, thank you that I moved from trials to being triumphant. Listen, I'm claiming it right now. I might not have everything I want. It might not look like I want it to look, but God, I'm claiming that I'm triumphant right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen, it is now time for us to give. Listen, I know that there might be some out there uh, that was waiting for the chairs to come in before you gave your offering, your donation. Well, they're here. And so if you still want to give to the chairs so that we might be able uh, to replenish our account, you can do that as well. Just indicate that on your giving. Uh, we are, uh, if you would go to, we have three ways of giving. If you would go to our website, gracechurchraleigh.org, and you can click on the Give the Five tab, and it'll take you straight to it. Um, and so just make sure you see Grace Church when you do it, and you'll be able to give that way. Also, you can go to our cash app at dollar sign Grace Church Raleigh, or you can give to our P.O. box that is right there on the screen. And if any of those ways are not comfortable for you, I ask that you can please stop by the church office on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And you can give it to the church secretary and we record your gift and give you credit for it. Amen? Listen, we keep doing what God has called us to do, and that is to make sure that we give what we're supposed to give to the kingdom of God. Amen. And as the pastor of this church, on behalf of all the, the officers, I want to thank you for your continual giving and gifts to the church. It has allowed ministry to continue to move forward. Amen. So listen, it's not just me giving you thanks, but God sees exactly your dedication to the ministry. Listen, I want to make sure that I definitely pub this because this is um, very important. On Thursdays, we have what we call plugged in Thursdays. 
It doesn't come up on our live, but you have to log into Zoom. We've been on, but we've had low attendance. Sometimes people say, I need you to come, Bishop Thompson would say, I need you to come close to me. I need you to hear my heart. Um, our Christian Education Department, uh, Minister Josh and uh, Minister Latoya are definitely uh, leading this effort. I, um, and they um, are planning wonderful lessons for us. But sometimes it, it, it's like five or six people on. With a church our size, that shouldn't be. We, we need to make sure that we're getting the word at all costs. Now listen, I'm just trying to be pastoral right now. You need to support the church that you support. Not only in giving, but also in your presence with ministry. And so I'm asking you all, please, as your pastor, if you would, please log in to Plug In Thursdays. Get this good teaching that is going forth because teaching is going. And this, and this is what I also need you to know. How can you be filled up during the week? Yeah, I know you might read, but let, let me tell you something. There's strength in body of believers. And so I'm asking you, please, ma'am, please, sir, if you would, please click on and we'll make sure we put a, click, a clickable link on Facebook so that it's easy to access so you can come onto the Zoom on Plugged In Thursdays. It starts at 7 o'clock, and I would definitely love and hope to see you all. Also this Wednesday, uh, I've been doing a segment called Conversations with Pastor Davis. Uh, this Sunday, uh, I mean this Wednesday rather, we're going to have some special guests on, and we're going to talk about being a father and a pastor at the same time. And so I have some special friends that are going to be on with me, Pastor David Morton, uh, Pastor Nathaniel Cox and uh, Pastor Daryl Scott Jr. is going to be on with me. We're going to talk about being a father and being a pastor at the same time. I believe it's going to be a wonderful conversation and how the two are married to one another. And, and I just definitely hope that you could take some time out of your schedule uh, to, to drop in on us and see uh, how that conversation is going to unfold. Listen, I love you all with the love of Christ. God bless you all. Continue to pray for me as I am definitely praying for you. Amen. And until we meet again in worship, uh, any of our virtual experiences, please know that grace is more than sufficient for you. God bless you.